Hello everyone, can you hear me? Okay, cool. Cool. So it's 9 p.m. already, so we're going to start. Welcome everyone to the IGV Prosperity Visit. Yay! Yeah, so um, cool. I hope you can hear my voice throughout um, this session. And if you cannot hear my voice, just um, put it on the chat. Like if you cannot hear me, so I can uh, try to adjust uh, the microphone. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, wait, this is the wrong slide. Okay, so um, for today, we have two days of uh, our prosperity visits. So the first day is going to be mostly regarding attraction. So it's going to be about opportunity marketing and also um, international relations. Yeah, cool. So the first thing that I'm going to show to all of you is this, which is the opportunity marketing. And I will share to you the output after this. And I'm actually trying to record the session. So I hope um, it works because this is my first time using this app. So yeah, I hope it works and we can share to the people that is not here. Okay, cool. So uh, the topics that we're going to discuss now is opportunity marketing. Yes, so um, before we actually start the session, like you can share on the chat, uh, like what do you know about opportunity marketing? Like what's the thing that you do when you hear the word opportunity marketing, especially in IGV? Yes, so you can type here um, any inputs. What do you think when you hear about opportunity marketing? Okay, so promote IGV project online from Winsin, from UNMC. Yes, is there anyone else when they want to share? Like, what do you know about um, opportunity marketing? Mm. Anyone? <laughs> Any other people? Yeah. Okay, no one. Ah, LC to LC partnership. Ah, that is more into IR. Yeah, but actually opportunity marketing is one part, like uh, one part of IR, but this is more like specific on how can we actually promote our attract uh, more people into the project. Yeah, true. That is one part of opportunity marketing. And yes, yeah. So basically that is the general thing when you hear about opportunity marketing. And yes, the next one is basically I'm going to review again regarding our timeline. So like it's already February and it's already in the midst of attraction phase. So like how to make sure that you are ready to face attraction peak. Yes, and cool. Yeah, so for today, we're going to discuss um, these four topics, which is uh, what is Malaysianness. So I want to share to you our new brand for IGV, which is Malaysianness. And the second one is National Project Booklet. So if uh, some of you attend the previous commission meeting with the vice president of IGV, like we already discussed that you need to prepare the uh, National Project Booklet before uh, 15th of uh, February. And then in this session, I will show you how can you actually um, Utilize the national project booklet that is created by the MC team. And then the next thing is valid proposition. So this is always the question that you ask to me, like for example, okay, where if we run national project, how to make sure that we can dis dis think our national project with other LC's national project. So we will discuss more regarding follow proposition, how to make sure that you can differentiate your LC with other LC in terms of promoting your unique project. And then the next one is opportunity designs. So how to make sure that you can design your opportunity to be uh, as attractive as the value that you want to send to the EP. Cool. And next. Yeah. So the first thing that I will discuss to you uh, is the Malaysianness. So what is Malaysianness? Yeah. So this is the brand that we actually discuss um, during the replanning that, okay, so actually what's the thing that we want people to remember when they come to Malaysia and when they hear about our project in IGV. So um, in this part, Malaysianness is actually the perception of feeling or being Malaysian culturally or spiritually. Yeah. So how can we make sure that we are proud in showcasing our Malaysianness in everything that we do? Yeah. Cool. And then, yeah. So in this session, I also want to get some insight to you. Like what is Malaysianness to you? 
Yeah, so if anyone of you can share in the chat, it will be great. So we can uh, define together what is actually Malaysian is according to you. Okay, so can you hear me? Okay, cool. Yes. So like, can you share like, what do, when you hear about Malaysianness, right? Like being a Malaysian spiritually, like culturally, being fully connected with um, Malaysia as a country. And then you also remember right during the NPM, like there is a session uh, by um, Varon, like sharing what is actually Malaysianness. So can you actually share like, what is Malaysianness to you, like in your perspective? Using using Manglish, <laughs> yeah, that's actually one of the thing. Like, actually, it's very distinct, and like people actually can, uh, really know. Like when you speak like Manglish, that you are actually from Malaysia, like this thing. Yeah. When you can eat nasi lemak or roti canai together at Mama, and we we say lah. <laughs> yes, cool. Yeah, that is actually one of the part of Malaysian is, and like, actually, like this simple simple thing, how to make sure that we can actually make people interested about our culture more with the things that we do like simple like first yeah diversity yeah that is the thing that we always emphasize like being united in a very diverse country yeah bahasa roja what does that mean bahasa roja <laughs> i don't know that yeah <laughs> i think you can share to me ah speaking more than two language is it bahasa roja or is it different yeah milo is our favorite yeah always Milo, Milo dinosaur, like this kind of thing is like things that will remind you of like Malaysia as a country. Yeah. So like this simple, simple thing, like defining Malaysianness doesn't have to be like very fancy or things that you need to make it like very good or like very big. But actually it can be like, how can you make sure that you showcase this simple, simple thing to when you're actually promoting Malaysia as a country to people outside Malaysia? Yeah. So like Chinese mix Malay, mix India language, like this kind of thing. Yeah, it's very interesting though. Yeah, because like um right now we are actually trying to define how to make sure that we can really promote Malaysianness in every IGF project that we have. Yeah. So thank you for your input. It's actually very uh very nice and it gives me a lot of insight on how can we actually promote more our project and really showcase the Malaysianness to uh, the global planetary. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, uh, the usage is actually we will use Malaysianness for our Facebook page and, and Facebook campaign and also landing page. So every promotional materials needs to include live Malaysianness as well. So how to make sure it's not only the things that you say, but when you want to promote Malaysian project to people, to other partners, that you actually include this branding in everything that you promote. Yeah, that's how this Malaysianness brand is used. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So where actually, if you see, this is our old brand, which is Jintai Malaysia. And then I already changed the link into Leave Malaysianist. So it's already on progress. And then our landing page also is already on progress. That we're going to change it to Leave Malaysianist. And then um, our booklet also, the things that I will share to you after this, is going to include a lot of Malaysianist as the content of the booklet. Yes. Cool. And then, yeah, we're going to revamp this landing page also. The Chintai Malaysia, we're going to put Live Malaysianist as our new brand. Yes. Cool. So that's for um, what is Malaysianist. So for you not to get confused of our new branding. So like that is uh, why we decided we change our brand to Live Malaysianist. Okay. So the next thing is going to be the project booklet. Yeah, this is the most important thing that we need to prepare and do, uh, especially in the attraction uh, peak, is because that inside this project booklet, we want to make sure that our EPs, our potential EPs, are actually very clear of if they want to go to Malaysia, like what is the thing that they will get, and actually what is the thing that they need to prepare, what kind of, uh, what kind of project that I will go when I come to Malaysia. Yeah, and then as our, one of our strategy to promote our project and product packaging in IR, we create a standardized project booklet to represent the brand of Live Malaysianist. And then inside the booklet, actually, there is a template where you can actually edit the information that you have 
to put it according to your RC. Yeah, so you can find it at bit.ly slash malaysianist booklet. So you can access it, uh, open it is in Isaac Hub. Yeah, so um, you can access it and start to look at it. And then during the session, I will explain to you how to use it. Okay, cool. Yes. And then question, uh, what if I already created my booklet? So to make sure that every, every or of our booklet are aligned, actually put a space for you if you have any additional information to put is, you can put in our projects. So basically, if you opened the project booklet, you will see that there is this template here. There's actually, you can put the details of your project there, for example, and then you can put any link of video, of blog, or other details of your project into the uh, standardized booklet. Yeah. But then why again the objective is putting into this standardized booklet is to make sure that we have a clear branding that we want to present to the entity partners and the people that want to come to our booklet. Yes. Cool. So, yes. Okay. So actually in this space, I want all of you to actually try to open the link. So if you want to open the link, you can um, open with Isaac Hub. In there, you can find the project booklet link. And then um, you can actually try to see what kind of added value that you want to add in the project booklet. Yeah. Cool. And for this question, um, I will leave it here. So you can brainstorm for yourself. Like when you open the national standardized booklet, like what is other thing that you can add value to this booklet? Yes. Okay. So I will just leave it there. You can access uh, the project booklet and also for PD people, uh, for those who are PD in here, you can actually also add like partnership testimonials, like showcasing your partners into the booklet to make sure that it's also attracting people to know, okay, when I go to a project with this LC, I will go to this kind of partners. Yeah, so the action step for PD people is mostly on how to make sure that you already have the testimonial, the partners and PS, and also the documentation of your partners, then you can also put it in the booklet. Yes, so that's for PD for here. Cool. And this is for the project booklet. Okay, so next. Um, is going to be what is follow proposition. So uh, for who who's in here that knows what is actually follow proposition and what is the use of having a follow proposition? Yeah, can some of you share? What is follow proposition? Do you know? Especially uh, PD who do sales, you must know what is follow proposition and where is it, when is it, where is it come from? And why is it important for you to have a follow proposition and uh, the product that you saw? Mm. Okay, so anyone? Okay. Ah, okay. So matching share, yeah, Amanda, I will explain to you how to do it after this. Yeah, understand our customer need and find products connection with it. Yes, that's basically it. Yeah, so um, follow proposition is basically how to make sure that we can connect what the customer needs with what is the thing that we have. And then through that, we know, okay, so if I want to attract this kind of customer, I need to present my project and my LC to be like this, this, this. Yeah, so in this space, I will just click on the YouTube link and then Let's look at the value uh, we can watch uh, the file proposition video together. Okay, so yes. Position Canvas, a tool that will help you design, test, build, and manage great customer value propositions. It's like a plug in to the business model Canvas. The tool is based on two elements of your business model the customer segment who you intend to create value for, and the value proposition which you believe will attract customers. With the value proposition canvas, you can map out both in more granularity and show the fit between what you offer and what customers want. The customer segment profile describes the characteristics of your customers in more detail. The profile is composed of the jobs your customers are trying to get done in their work and in their lives, the related pains outlining the negative aspects they hate or would like to avoid, 
And third, the gains describing the positive outcomes and benefits which your customers would love to have. Now let's look at the profile in more detail. Jobs describe an important issue your customers are trying to solve in their work or in their lives. It could be the tasks they're trying to perform and complete, the problems they're trying to solve, or the needs they're trying to satisfy. And then jobs can have a functional, social, social, or emotional intent. Now, some jobs will be crucial to their customers, others will be trivial. And the second are the pains describing anything that annoys your customers before, during, and after getting a job done. This could be undesired costs and situations, negative emotions, or risks. And again, some customer pains will be severe, others light. And the third aspect of the profile are the gains describing the outcomes and benefits your customers require, expect, desire, or would be surprised by. This includes things like functional utility, social gains, positive emotions, and cost savings. And again, some outcomes and benefits will be more relevant to customers than others. These three elements of the profile describe the customer characteristics that you can observe in the market. Now let's look at the value proposition map describing the features of your value proposition which you are designing to address your customers' most important jobs, pains, and gains. The map is composed of the products and services your value proposition is built around, the pain relievers outlining how your products and services alleviate customer pains, and third, the gain creators describing the positive outcomes and benefits your products and services create for your customers. Now let's look at the map in more detail. First, the products and services simply outline the bundle of products and services that you're offering customers to help them get a functional, social, or emotional job done and to address their pains and gains. Now, the second aspect here, the pain relievers make explicit how your products and services will alleviate specific customer pains before, while, and after the customer is trying to get a job done. They show which of all the customer pains your value proposition is addressing by eliminating or reducing them. And then the next aspect here are the gain creators. They make explicit how your products and services create customer gains. They show which of all the customer gains your value proposition is addressing by creating benefits and outcomes. Now you have achieved a so-called problem solution fit when the features of your value proposition map perfectly match the characteristics of your customer segment profile. When the market validates this match and your value proposition gets traction with real customers, you have achieved a so-called product market fit. But don't forget, successful businesses have more than just a great value proposition. They have a great business model that makes a customer value proposition possible. Now, do you have what it takes to design great business models and value propositions with pain relievers and gain creators that match real customer jobs, pains, and gains? Class dismissed. Okay, cool. So that is basically um, what is file proposition and what is actually the benefits of having a file proposition in your product and in your services. Okay, so we will continue. Okay. Yes. Okay. So actually file proposition is a positioning statement that explains what benefit you provide for who and how you do it uni uniquely well. So I think that is the key word that is actually needs to be emphasized in file proposition is how unique that you, you can actually um, showcase your product or services. Describe your target buyer, the problem you solve, and why you're distinctly better than the alternatives. Okay. So this is the summary of what you should uh, decide and create and actually observe in what are you doing and what is the customer that you have, especially in your IGP project. So to know, okay, if I have the same national product that every other LC have, so how to make sure that I can make my LC and my project that uniquely well to make sure that I can attract a lot of different kind of customers. Okay, cool. 
So in this space, I will show you how can you actually connect and to make sure that you can create your LC and IGV project follow proposition is first is who is your customer. So to decide who is your customer, you need to make sure that you know what is their jobs, their pain and their gain. And then the tips to actually decide this is look at your EP history and define your top three entity partners or LCs that supply you consistently. And from this data, you can know actually, okay, so for example, I'm from LCA and then consistently I get a lot of EPs coming from Vietnam. So what kind of needs that Vietnam EP wants to the project that they want to go exchange to? And then in this sense, you can actually design your project to match to match the need of the customer. Yeah, so that this is how it works. And then the second thing is, what is the thing that makes them satisfied with your past project? So you can also look at the standard survey, you can look at the NPS score, testimonials, and then you can figure out what is the thing that relieves their pain and create their gain. Yeah, so uh, after reviewing your project, you know, okay, so basically, for example, my previous EP are satisfied with my project is because that I always bring them to meet the external partners. I always meet them to meet the partners, for example. Then how to make sure that you can also emphasize this thing in your next project. Yeah. And then the third thing is, what's the thing that differentiate you with other LC and project? So in this part, you really need to brainstorm on how to make sure that you can emphasizing your unique points in your LC and your IGV projects. Yeah. Also use past testimonials on how are your EPs are interested to come to your project, what is the thing that attracts them, and what is the thing that makes them satisfied with your project. And then you can also obviously include internal processes and follow delivery as your strength. So for example, if you see the process time, like LCA has the fastest approval timeline, uh, approval time uh, for approval. And then you can also emphasize this in your booklet or in the thing or the way you promote your project to EPs. Know how to make sure that you can always emphasize the uniqueness of your LC and your project to the EPs. Cool. And then the last thing is connecting the dots. So after you answer all of this thing, how to make sure that you know your customer, your uniqueness, and connect the dots on how you position yourself in doing opportunity marketing. So basically, when you do opportunity marketing, it's not only that you promote your project and then you put your past picture and that's it, but actually, how can you make sure that you connect the way that you promote your project to the customer needs? Yeah. So how to make sure that you can do more high-level opportunity marketing rather than spreading poster and booklet only. Okay. So that's for file proposition. Okay. Cool. Yes, and then how we will use it, especially in the booklet, is that in the booklet, you will see that is an Isaac in Langkawi. I think it's if you open the booklet, there's a slide number four, around slide number four or five. Then you will see this um, instruction and how can you actually put your file proposition in here. So you can put your file proposition in this slide. I already put two slides to actually you can put your file proposition there. You can also put your past project photos that are actually very interesting. And yeah, you can. there's also some guiding question there for you to answer and how can you actually create your follow-up position. And then after you create your follow-up position, put it in the booklet to show to, your, to our entity partners what is the thing that is unique about your LC and projects. This way, even though you run national projects, EP can still differentiate from each LC and which LC that connects with them the most. Yeah, because some people, some people, they are more interesting. Um, okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I thought my... Ah, okay, yeah, I thought my microphone is off. Okay, cool. So, yeah, how to make sure that... Make sure that yeah, how to make sure that your project can connect with the EP that is actually very... Um, fit with the projects that you have okay cool so we move to the next slide okay so that is for opportunity uh for file proposition and then we can move to opportunity design so for this part it's very simple so after all of you already opening your project then um this is the action step that you need to do to make sure that you will review again is my opportunity that I put in the expo is actually very attractive enough to make sure that I can showcase the follow-up position of my project and my LC. Yeah, it can be in a very, very simple thing. It can be in your project title. It can be the picture in your expo header. 
header. It can be your main activities. It can also be how you describe your project. Yeah, so you can check all of your open opportunities in the search tool and make sure that the information is aligned and clear. Again, I always never tire to remind you to always check again if it's really aligned with your project and if it's already representing, representing the project that you want to showcase to the EP. And then the second thing is check again your expert header and information. Make sure that it represents your follow proposition and our country branding. If you need to edit again, it's okay. Make sure you can send the link to me again and then tell which part that you edit so I can open it again. Yeah, so in this part, review again, make sure that you are satisfied with it. Make sure that if you're an EP, you are very attracted to go to the, to the project. So again, I always recommend you to review and see. And the third thing is details that always miss is always your project title. Yeah, some people and some projects, you always put the like batches, like for example, uh, project ABC, batches one, project ABC, batches two. And actually it's, it will be very confusing for the EP because they will only see the, the date and the timeline of the project. Yeah, so how to make sure that you make it as attractive as possible. And then if you really want to see the batches, you can open the IGV master tool every details are there so make sure that the project title put in the opportunities is for the EPs to get attracted to your project cool and then the second thing is the expert header the pictures needs to be very clear needs to represent what are you doing in the project and make sure it's also attractive so when you see for example like there's a lot of activities happening in the picture like very fun activities make people interested put that kind of picture in the expert header and then the third one is main activities make sure it's very clear and detailed so for example when you you put uh, incoming preparation seminar when you put lead summit or lead, uh, lead activities this kind of thing make sure that you explain what is actually inside the activity because you cannot assume that everyone understands the ISAC uh, terms or ISAC knowledge from there. So make sure that it's in a human language, non-ISAC language, so the EP can know actually what is the activities that they will do when they go to the project. Cool. And then for promotional tools, don't forget to add the Malaysianist logo as branding. Again, like the thing that you shared earlier, how to make sure that you can always emphasizing the Malaysianness, the things that you think are really representing live Malaysianness everything that you do when you promote the project yeah so it can be very interesting so people can know and Malaysians will stuck in their head when they think okay i want to go exchange to asia pacific i will remember to go to malaysia yeah so that is like the long-term vision that we want to have in every each of our igv project okay cool so actually this is a good case practice uh from isaac in unmc so it's very clear like uh, clean our plate uh, and then Stripe Food Waste. So they know, okay, when I see this title, this project is about food waste. Yeah. So like how to make sure that your title is as clear as possible. And then expert header is the past project picture or using the national template. So like when you see this header, you see that this project is actually very massive. There's a lot of people in there. And then when I go there, I will meet a lot of new people and I, I will experience a lot of things. Yeah. So like every simple Project pictures will represent a lot of things of your project. And then, yeah, title is very clear, simple, and not confusing for EPs. Very clear, the project is clean our plate, is, for example, their first project uh, in UNMC, and then it's about food. Cool? Yeah. And then the example of the details of the activities is very clear. So, for example, like incoming preparation seminar, what is the thing that you will do? And then, like volunteering in food banks, what is, what is the thing that you will do? Yeah. So, how to make sure that main activities are described clearly and detailed so if we can get a picture of their JD and how's the project going to happen. And then, objective of the project is also clear and summarized in entire project aim. Yeah. How to make sure that the detail is as clear as possible. Okay, cool. Yeah. So this will be the call to action. So uh, you can open again this link. So always remember this link, bit.ly slash, slash Malaysianist booklet. So it's on Isaac Hub, you can access it. And the deadline to submit your project booklet is before 15th of February, 2018. So I know that all of you opened the project already. So make sure that you finish all of the booklet for your open project based on the search tool. And then collect and upload all of your winter documentation, like pictures, videos, testimonials, articles, any blog posts, so we can post and put it on our Facebook page and landing page before 15 of February. And then some people ask, okay, what if my winter project hasn't finished yet? It's okay, 
at least you have something that you can upload and we can get a lot of materials and different kind of perspective of how can we actually design the campaign and also the landing page. Okay, cool. So this is for opportunity marketing. Do you have any question? Do you have any question for this? If not, you can just wave or you can just give a signal. Yes. Okay, cool. If everyone is cool, I hope you remember the call to action because this is going to be the checklist to get your Ang Pao and then the price is very attractive. Yes, so make sure that uh, you finish this call to action. It's very simple. Okay, the booklet, do we need to send to you when done? I think uh, after you finish the booklet, you can put the link in the search tool. Yeah, so I will check from there. Yeah, if you finish the booklet, you can upload it and then put the link on the search tool. Yeah, because on our IGP search tool, I already put a column where you can put your project booklet and you can put it there. Okay, cool. Everyone is cool. So we can move on to IR partnership. Yes. So we move to the next part, which is international relations for attraction. Okay, cool. So we move to the next session, which is IR for attraction. Yeah. So again, very simple question, what do you know about IR? Like, what is in your mind when you heard about IR and what is the thing that you mainly do when you do international relations activities? Yeah, can you share some of you, like what you know about doing IR? Anyone? Just chat on the chat box. Form international partnership with our LC, form partnerships with other entities and fasten process time, ask to LC partnerships, get more complete and etc. etc. Yes, so basically that. Yeah. So basically in a very simple terms, international relations is how to make sure that sending entity and home entity are actually collaborating together to make sure that they can fulfill each other objectives. Okay, so objectives can be a lot. For example, objectives can be to make sure that both of the entities can work together and also like make sure that uh, each of us are completing our, our aspira aspiration goal. Yeah, it can be a lot. And doing international relation, it doesn't have to be only like asking for EPs, asking for VPs contact, asking for EP manager contact, but, but it also can be more like, for example, aligning the culture, how to make sure that People are connected with Malaysian culture, for example, and then people are going to go in, going to be interested to go to Malaysia. Yeah, so it consists of a lot of things and how to make sure that you can actually utilize this to get a lot of EPs. Okay, cool. Yeah, so for international relations, I will divide it into two parts, which is national partner and LC to LC partnerships. So in this part, I'm going to share to you who is actually our national partner and why are we actually collaborating with them. And then uh, the second one is going to be LC to LC partnerships. It's how to make sure that you can actually downscale and utilize uh, from the national partner to have your own LC to LC partnership. Okay, cool. Okay, so if you want to know who is actually our top three entity partners, so it's mainland of China, Vietnam, and Indonesia. Why? It's because that actually uh, from our past history, we always get a lot of EPs from mainland of China, from Vietnam, and Indonesia, and mostly the experts are actually pretty good. And that's why they always trust us in sending a lot of EPs to our country, and they feel like they're also connected, and they feel that they are very interested in terms of going to Malaysia to, to discover the culture, really experience the project, and um, so that's why they put a lot of high goal, especially this summer. Yeah. So mainly these top three entities, uh, most of their goal is uh, more than 100 and then the biggest one is actually uh, mainland of china so the target is around 225 realization for the summer so how to make sure that you can always approach these top three entities because like the sending entities also um promoting our country to their eps yeah so how to make sure that you can also approach these three entity partners um 
for you to have your own LC to LC partnership. And then we also have other LC to LC, uh, other MC to MC partnerships, which is with India, Germany, Hong Kong, uh, Taiwan, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Kyrgyzstan, Netherlands, Canada, and Belgium. Yeah, so if you see the color here, the green one is from Asia Pacific, um, the purple is from Europe, and the red one is from uh, Americas. Yeah, so mostly of our, our partner is mostly from Asia Pacific. Okay, cool. Yeah, so what is actually the partnership deliverables between MC to MC partnerships? So the first thing is aligning both national and local strategies between countries. So how to make sure that our strategies, the things that we want to achieve, and the things that the sending entity or entity partners want to achieve are aligned and we are together achieve it through the strategies that we have. And it's not only in national terms, but it's also on the local level. And then the second one is aligning standards operation procedures between countries. Yeah, so this thing is mostly how to make sure that both of our process is faster and we make sure that the EPs can be converted fast to make sure that they can experience the project faster. And it's also regarding the conversion, how to make sure that the EP that apply can mostly all converted to get realized. Yes. And then the third one is implementing partnership initiatives to improve the internal process and the quality of the customer experience. So how to make sure that the way we designed um, the partnership is to make sure that we can increase more customer experience through EP and make sure that the entity partners EPs are satisfied with our project and it can be a very sustainable partnership in the future. Yes. And then the last one is package the project together with the partners to promote it to their entity. Yeah. So how to make sure when they promote GV, for example, they will promote go to GV to Malaysia like, like this. That's how product packaging works. Okay. So that's about uh, our national partnership deliverables. And then the next one is uh, the partnership deliverables. This is like mainly our three top strategies. So the first one is product packaging. It's create a specialized content to promote to the entity partners. Second one is 10 days process time implementation. So this is our main goal, especially for the entity partners, is five days accepted and five days approved. And then for file delivery is using national standards tracker to make sure that the standards implementation are aligned. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this is the example that we have of doing uh, entity, entity, entity to entity partnerships. So if you can see here, actually this is with Isaac in Cambodia is during last winter. So actually they opened a virtual info session for me to represent and share about uh, IGV in Malaysia and how, why should they come to Malaysia to go for exchange? Yeah, so this is one of the strategy that they have. And then the second one, if you see below is the website of Isaac in Netherlands. So basically they put, um, our country there and then they promote one of our national project there. Yeah, so if you see here, there's not a lot of Asia Pacific country, right? It's only like um, Malaysia and Indonesia. Yeah, so like this is how entity partnership works. So how to make sure that we can form a strong bond and partnership with the entity partners and make sure we can achieve both of our goals together. Okay, cool. So this is also the example of our national partners initiatives. So no interview with Isaac in Vietnam. So it is implemented last uh, winter and it uh, it actually a pilot with Isaac in Utah last time and it, it actually works. Yeah, so uh, it actually makes the process really fast and it cuts the unnecessary thing uh, process to make the process faster. Cool. And then the second one is virtual infestation with Isaac in Cambodia, citizenship with Isaac in India and also Vietnam. Um, so like most of them will visit our projects they want to see and they want to promote directly document the implementation of the project and bring back and promote it to their home entity. And then the last one is project package to Malaysia in the OGV website with Isaac in Netherlands. Yeah, so we have actually a lot of more, but this is mostly the thing that is already implemented and uh, we will plan more. We will try to make sure that we have a lot of initiatives with the sending entity to make sure that we can grow and grow more. Okay. Cool. So this is the MC and LC role uh, in terms of national partnerships. So MC role is to make sure that all of the strategies uh, and initiatives are done scale to, L to LC and build LC capacity to run IR. So how to make sure that initiatives are done scale to you to make sure that you can also run IR by yourself. And then the next one is to make sure that uh, for LC role is to make sure that LC implement the national strategies and initiatives 
and LC to LC partnership with country partners LC. Yeah. So uh, I think I already shared to some of you how can you actually access the OGV contacts of our entity partners and make sure that you can contact them as soon as possible and form your own uh, LC to LC partnership. Cool. So that is for national partnership, and then we'll go next to the LC to LC partnerships. So how to get started is we have two part for attraction mainly. It's going to be on plan and deliver. And for plan, it includes research and targeting, and then for the proposal and meeting and follow up of implementation. Cool. Yes. So for plan, uh, we have research. So the first thing is find out what is your suitable partners based on data. And then how can you actually get the data? Is first is you can get the data from XPA from Entity to Entity Analytics and DAL. Yeah, so you can see your past project, usually from my past project uh, in my LC, from which country that usually EP comes. And then the second one is Align Timeline with the LC partners. So if you remember, like what Gina said earlier, that for example, you want to have partnership with Germany, but then Germany timeline is starts on August, and then you don't have any project that starts on August. So how to make sure that you can also align your partnership with your timeline. And then the third one is beside exchange numbers, review also the standards implementation and customer satisfaction from past realization. So a real case practice, actually in Malaysia, we have a lot of EPs came from Egypt. It's like more than 100. But then make sure again that when you want to have partnership with them, make sure that you have a clear standards implementation strategy and then make sure it's also not going to make you uh, uh, unsustainable in the terms. Because for Egypt, Egyptian EPs, if you want to have partnership with them, you need to have like the specialized visa for them to come to your project. Yeah. So again, if you want to have asset to asset partnership, think again, what country that is first suitable with your timeline, with your resources, and then um, based on the past performance, how is their experience and the standards implementation coming from them? Okay. So cool. And then the output from this part is you have list of LCs and countries that you will have partnership with. Okay. So that's for research. Cool. And then the second one is going to be targeting. So determine which entity that you will have LC to LC partnership with. Okay. Make sure to review again the partnership and total exchanges and how many people that they can send to our project. Okay. So for example, you already decide that you want to have partnership with um India, for example. Okay. So review again uh, your peak and in your project, how many Indian EPs that you can receive, and then how many of uh, EPs that they can specially send to your project. Okay. So it needs to be very clear. And then the second one is determine your goals for your focus and make sure that it's achievable, makes sense, plan for growth based on past performance also. Yeah. So if you want to set the goal, make sure that it's very clear and it's decided based on the research that you have earlier. Okay. And then the third one is design communication plan on how you will have meetings and touch points. Okay, so when you already design, okay, I want to have partnership with India, for example. So I will design that I will have meeting, for example, uh, fortnightly, and then I will have review monthly, and then I will have my uh, group is in WhatsApp, for example, because most of the VPs use WhatsApp there. Okay, That's for example, like that. And then the output from this process is you have three LC partners and go projection for summer peak. Okay, so this is the end part that we want to have. So you are make sure that you have a clear LC partners that you want to have for summer and then clear goal of how many EPs that you want to have from the specific LC. Okay, cool. We move next. Okay, so the next thing is deliver, which is proposal and meeting. So after you have your list of three target partners that you want to have, then you need to initiate the partnership meeting. Okay, so when having your first meeting with your partners, make sure that you achieve this checklist. First is objective and expectation of partnerships. Again, having a partnerships is not only that, okay, I want you to send uh, 50 EPs to my project and that's it. But you need to know, okay, what's the objective of the partnership? Why I choose you as our LC partners? From where is the data? And then what's the expectation from the partnerships? Second is go for summer peak. How many EPs that you want to have from the specific LCs for summer peak? Third one is project package, booklet, and project details. So how to make sure that the materials that the sending entity need, you already prepared two booklets and your project details. 
And the fourth one is code delivery method. How to make sure that you align standards implementation between sending entity and home entity. And then the fifth one, communication channel. Where are you going to have touch point the most with the EPM, with the EPs, this thing. And then the sixth is rules and policies. Okay, so I heard a lot of stories from all of you that uh, you have a lot of break realize, break approve, and then when you experience that, actually the sending entity doesn't respond to you, like this kind of thing. So how to make sure you can also send a rules and policies. So you can also actually set by yourself and the sending entity. Okay, so for example, the terms is like this. Okay, if you have um, break approval or break realize, sending entity needs to send money to a home entity, like this thing. Yeah, because actually, um, in this case, you can actually file a complaint for it, but then make sure that with your entity partners, you actually send these rules and policies also so they can understand and they can put it as their priorities when they want to send their EPs. Okay, and then the output from this is going to be 3LC Partners Partnership Plan. So you already have the objective, the goal, the project package, the communication channel, the code delivery method, the rules and policies, and it will be a plan for you to use for the whole summer period. Okay. And then after this is mostly on follow up implementation. So make sure that you follow up the partnership after the planning and during the implementation of attraction. So after you have the first meeting, make sure that you track them consistently, make sure that they are on track of promoting your project, giving the right materials that you have, and the things that you can do, such as track LC partners regarding the attraction implementation and timeline. So you can ask, okay, so when are you going to have your info session? When are you going to have your physical marketing? When are you going to post information about ASEC in uh, Malaysia, like this kind of thing? Yes. And then the second one is make sure that you send all the promotional materials needed from the sending entity for them to promote your projects. Okay, because sometimes uh, if they want to promote your project, they need to know, okay, what is the kind of materials that I need to give to my EP to make sure they want to come to Malaysia. And then there's also one of your responsibility to provide it to them. Cool. And then the third one is track on your applicants consistently and proceed to consideration as soon as possible. Okay, again, always remember regarding the process time. Uh, if, you if you really want to make this fast as possible, make sure that you can also align this with your uh, LC partners. Okay, cool. So for this part, the call to action will be fill your LC partner list in the entity to entity IGV tracker here. Yeah, so you can click there. I will also uh, upload this in the ISAC hub after this. So you can check it before 15 of February and then have a first meeting with your LC partners before 28 of February. Yeah, having a meeting with LC partners doesn't have to take a really, really long time. Actually, it's very short. Make sure that it covers at least this objective when you want to have the first uh, IR meeting. Okay, cool. So basically that. So that's basically the session that we have for this prosperity visit. I hope that you will remember the call to action and then uh, for now, we we'll still have around 13 minutes. So if you have any questions regarding this two um, education that I give to you, uh, the question and answer session is open now. Okay. So cool. And then uh, after this time ends, I will also uh, like check the attendance and then see from which LC that you are coming. Okay. Cool. So I will open the question and answer space for now. Yes, if you have any question, you can put on chat. Okay, so Vincent is wave. Cool. Yeah, cool. Okay, okay, again, if you don't have any question, you can also just wave in the chat. So I know and we can actually directly repeat to end the session and then I will directly check the attendance of um, this session. Okay.